Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. In this episode, I'll be making a hollow form or a vase from two pieces of yew cast in three colour epoxy resin. This is a project I've been trying to do for a while, so without further ado, let's get into it. This piece of yew has been kicking around for a while, so it's time for it to be put into a project. I'd previously stripped the bark off it and now it needs cutting to fit in the casting bucket. I could have used my circle cutting jig, but lately that seems to be cutting a bit undersized, leaving a lot of epoxy to be cut away to reveal the timber, so I cut this one freehand. To give a guide, I traced around the base of the bucket on the underside of the blank and roughly transferred the lines to the top, then I began removing material a bit at a time till I got a good fit. After a few minutes work, the blank eased into place, so it was straight onto the casting. But first I waxed the bucket. That done, with the blank in place, off camera, I hot glued some scraps of timber in the centre to carry the weights. This week's sponsor is of course Tea Expert. You'll find a link in the video description along with a 10% discount code. The colours for this project are red, blue and black. I wanted bold tones so I added a good measure of powder to each batch. one is mixed for at least two minutes then left to pre-cure. If you're wondering why I don't show this process it's because it varies so much depending on ambient temp, humidity, type of resin, how accurate your measuring is and any number of other variables. Safety is the first priority so I always wear safety glasses and a good quality respirator and I'm in a well ventilated area. Showing what works for me won't necessarily work for anyone else and I don't want to give out any wrong advice. Having learned a lesson on my last project, I made sure to prime the timber with some of the resin. This is just poured over the blank and massaged into the surface, making sure to cover all of it. I used nitrile gloves with a bucket underneath to catch the dribbles. A while later the epoxy resin had heated up to the point where it was just beginning to gel, so I poured each one into the casting. The blue was a touch hotter than the others, so that was first. This was followed by a little bit from each of the others until it was full. Well this isn't a great camera angle, but you get the idea. I had to keep one finger on the timber to stop it floating whilst I was topping up the casting. With the last dregs in the bucket, I added weight to keep it in place and lifted it into the pressure pot. Lid on and tightened down, then I brought the pressure up to 50 to 55 psi, and there it stayed for 24 hours. It's the next day, and the casting has gone well. There's a small crack in the blank, but nothing worth another pour to fill it. That would put me back another 24 hours. After a quick inspection, it was onto the lathe.
having said the casting was okay, there's always the worry in the back of my mind that something isn't right, but there's only one way to find out. With the blank secured to the lathe between the coal jaws and the tailstock holding it tight, I set about getting it balanced and levelling the top. Top level, I needed to cut a mortise for the four jaw chuck. After tightening the chuck using the tail stock to centre it, I turned the blank around. Now I had access to the base, I knew exactly how I wanted this one to look. So using the mid-sized carbide, I began removing the waste material. This wasn't going to be a footed bowl so there wouldn't be a cutout. This was going to be a simple design with a narrow diameter base blending up into a sweeping curve to the side which I was hoping to keep as wide as possible. As for the top, I had a few options to consider so I'll come back to that later. Size carbide made a bit of a mess in the resin, but this could be remedied with a large negative rate scraper. The damage in the resin was gone, but there was a bit of tear out in the U. So I went at this with some 80 grit. Success, now I had to flatten the base and cut another mortise. This mortise would have to be deep to give the chuck the best purchase. There will be a fair bit of hollowing out, it's mostly resin and that'll be tough to get through. I turned the blank around and set about hollowing it out. Now this is where I made a bit of an error. I used the 40, then the 70mm Forstner bits to drill out the centre. Then what I should have done is continue with carbide cutters and high speed steel to remove the bulk of the material, because at this point access was as good as it would get. But instead I decided to move on to the top, figuring I would be able to hollow it all out later on. For the top I had a section of U. I flattened the cut face on a large disc sander, this would then be bonded to the top of the resin blank with 5 minute epoxy. The rapid setting epoxy was mixed with black mica powder then applied to the resin blank and what was left I applied to the U. The two pieces were then smushed together using the tailstock to pin it in place 
and add the necessary pressure. Twenty minutes later and the two bits are well and truly stuck together. So I turned the lathe up to around 1000 RPM and using a 3 8 bowl gouge I started to remove the excess timber. Whilst you watch me shaping the top I'll go through the other options I'd considered. First I thought about a segmented ring top, perhaps four rings standing four inches 100 millimeters high either cast with blue black resin joints or simply glued then shaped in a similar way as I'm doing now. Then there was no top, just a plain bowl. Or I could have done a hollow form, no wood on top, just a 70mm aperture in the top of the resin. Let me know what you think in the comments. I knew I wanted the U resin joint to be set back from the edge of the midsection. The width of the U sort of dictated that had to happen, but that's okay. And with a lot of the top cut away, I could see how this bit was going to look, though the rest of the shape above that was still a bit of a mystery. As I continued cutting away at the wood, a shape began to appear. I liked the way the neck curved up towards the rim, so I went with it, using a large negative rate scraper to blend and fare the surface. So far so good but before I went any further I would have to drill out the centre and to stand any chance of getting enough clearance to reach down and hollow out the base I would have to use a 70mm force and a bit. Even with the 70mm bit there was still a reasonable thickness to the neck so I moved on. The rim was the next thing that had me wondering what to do. I tried a flat edge, but that didn't look right, so I thinned it down a bit more, and in the end, after a bit of sanding, it sorted itself out. Next was a hollowing out, and straight away I could tell it was going to be difficult to get into the base. So I started at the top, widening the mouth, working my way down then to the neck. For this I used various carbide tools, with a bit of assistance from a side cutting scraper. The smaller carbide tools were good for cutting the bulk of the waste material and the negative rate carbide was great for smoothing out the tool marks and a carbide hook tool from Simon Hope got into the more inaccessible bit under the neck. In the end I got a lot of material out, but not as much as I would have liked. The negative rate carbide smoothed the inside and it was done. I sanded with 80 grit to check for tool marks and divots, then I had some repairs to do. There was a couple of crumbling knots to fill and what was left of the crack in the epoxy. I used black super glue to fill the voids, an activator to fast cure it, then I sanded first by hand on the repairs, 
then I sanded inside and out from 80 to 600 grit, then up to 3000 grit, concentrating on the epoxy resin. Then I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. This was followed up with two liberal coats of sanding sealer, each one denibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad. Next up, Yorkshire Grit, a single application, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Then the resin polishing, first to go, Merca Polar Shine 10, a single coat, cleaned away, ready for the next stage. Polishine 5, another single coat, polished off with clean paper towel to leave a deep shine. And to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax, two coats buffed to seal and protect the surface. That's it, another project finished. Now what do I say about this one? Well, I learned a lot about doing things in the correct order. But with that said, I'd like this one a lot, and I hope you like it too. It's a fairly simple design, the grain and patination in the wood contrast perfectly with a swirling epoxy resin, and it'll sit nicely in my collection. Now I've decided to do a giveaway. When I reach 10,000 subscribers, a piece will be made especially for that event and I'll try to open it up to as many countries as I can, but postage and import restrictions may play a part in that decision. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. A thumbs up will be much appreciated, and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.